What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be upgrading the longer Ray 5 10 watt to this 30 watt module used on the longer B1. The Ray 5 is the first laser I ever used. It's a very beginner friendly laser and the 10 watt gives you enough power to do a little bit of everything but if you're like me and you prefer cutting things out on your laser as opposed to engraving this is going to be a big upgrade when it comes to working with thicker materials. I've made lots of useful tools and jigs over the last year working with the Ray 5 and when Longer offered me an upgraded laser module I knew this would open up more opportunities that allow the Ray 5 to cut materials that would be far too thick for a 10 watt laser. So the 30 watt upgrade kit includes this gigantic laser, a new power adapter, two limit switches, a couple extra brackets, a new cable, and some miscellaneous hardware. So before we take the 10 watt module off of the Ray 5, I thought we'd do a few cuts on different materials just to show you how this thing handles different thicknesses. So as you can see, the 10 watt module is very capable at cutting, even on thicker materials such as quarter inch ply. Let's get this 30 watt module installed and see how thick we can go in a single pass. So before we can install the 30 watt, we have to uninstall the 10 watt. I'm starting by removing all the wiring and the air assist tube, undoing the thumb screws and taking the laser off of the mount. I'm going to save these screws for later so we can use this head in the future. Then we need to loosen the belt adjustment and undo the screws that hold the x-axis to the frame. We're going to be pulling the unit off of the gantry and taking the crash post out of the x-axis so we can remove the laser head driver from the frame. This is our new mounting bracket, so we need to start by removing this longer branded bracket from the motor. We're going to use the provided wrench to hold these nuts while we spin the bolts out with the provided allen key. Take note when you're disassembling this, this bottom axle has a nut instead of a spacer. It's different than the top two, so just bear that in mind when you take this apart. And with our old bracket removed, this is the motor mount. We can go ahead and install our new bracket just the same way the old one came off. And as you can see here, the top two axles got spacers while the bottom one gets one nut. We can go ahead and put the motor back on the x-axis, keeping the belt tight while we slide it across and drop the x-axis back into the mounts. This goes back together just the same as it came apart. Then we're going to go ahead and add our belt tensioning nut. I always struggle with this. I find a pair of needle nose helps get that little cam down in the track. This is our new slider bracket. Just align the top two holes. Don't worry so much about the bottom ones as there is an extra set of holes, but as long as you align the top, everything will line up. And we can go ahead and slide the laser down into the track. And we've got both limit switches mounted. There is a specific distance these need to be, so follow the instructions for that measurement. Okay guys, so our frame is fully assembled. The 30 watt laser is mounted, moving. I've got the first two ends of the cable plugged in. We need to go through and replace the cable. So um, you're gonna start, well, I'm gonna start at the module and work my way backwards. The end with multiple plugs, I think there's seven or eight plugs here. This is gonna go to the housing. So I'm gonna start at the top and work my way back. There's four screws to access the inside of the control panel. It's going to feel like you missed one, but it's just a tight fit. So just be gentle when you're prying this off. In order for the diagram to match up, this is the orientation you want to hold the control board in and you're gonna use the image on the right hand side. Okay, so our cable is all installed. This was definitely the most difficult part of the whole assembly, and part of that is due to um, just the low quality right here. You can't make out a couple of these numbers, so I'm just gonna run you through which plug goes where. So down here we have a 12 volt. This is X axis, Y axis. Up here we have another 12 volt right there. This one is labeled TTL. This is the fourth plug across the top. TTL does not appear in the legend, but it is a uh, double pin laser module cable. So TTL is your top left. These ones are all pretty straightforward. We have PR, that's probe, Z, Y, and X. Um, everything else kind of labeled 
uh, matches up to what you think it should be. It was just this TTL in the top right that uh, I wasn't too sure about. Okay guys, we are all assembled with the 30 watt module. I have it running at the moment, as you can obviously hear. It is quite loud. But before we get this thing up and running, we have to go to the computer and do a bit of a firmware update. You're going to have to go to the longer website, download the firmware for the 20 watt. It does not list the 30 on the firmware list, but as you see in the instructions, um, the 20 and 30 laser, 20 and 30 watt laser kit instructions are pretty much the same. So. Get yourself this uh, download tool and we're going to have to go through and flash the laser. Alright guys, we're almost ready for the fun stuff. I have flashed the firmware to the laser. There's also something you have to do with the SD card. You need to put some new uh, documents on there and load that to the laser. I'll put a couple of links below to some helpful videos as well as the software link. But now, if we come over here in Lightburn, we can hit the home button and the laser will automatically go X and Y limit. And it finds its home position and you're ready to start engraving. So that's something the 10 watt did not have. The homing was always a bit of an issue, especially for beginners. Um, I see all, all kinds of people in the comments, how do I home my laser properly? So we're finally all set up. We're gonna go ahead and get to the fun stuff. Let's see what this thing can cut. Okay, well that was a pretty clean cut. That was at 500 millimeters per minute at 75% power. So we doubled our speed and we cut our power by 25%. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna run some quarter inch through the laser next. I forgot to mention, this is how you set the focal point. Uh, there's a nice little fold down tab here. You put that right on top of the material and these thumb screws, you don't really need to, but I put them both in there. Um, the thumb screw is how you slide it up and down on the slider. So this is a nice little upgrade. I've lost my little focal point adjustment caliber tool so many times I've had to cut myself countless uh, replacements and I lose those ones too so that's pretty nice. Okay, the 30 watt module did a nice job on the quarter inch plywood. This one here on the left, I had to push out a little bit. That was at 100% power, single pass at 200 millimeters per minute. This one on the right came out much cleaner. That was 100% power, 300 millimeters per minute with two passes. So if I was cutting quarter inch, I think I'd go uh, with the two pass option. That came out really nice. I'm gonna load some acrylic into the laser next. I have something I wanna try before we finish off this video. Okay, we're gonna try some acrylic next. I've noticed the fan on the 30 watt is very powerful and it's blowing air down through the module. So you get a lot of air coming out around this area. If you have some really small pieces of basswood, something light, it's likely that it could blow it away with the fan. So I made these little hold down tabs. These are on my Etsy store. I'll put a link to them below. They're made out of acrylic and they, uh, they just pop into your honeycomb just like that you can use them to hold down different items you're working on while you're engraving so nothing moves and nothing blows away well guys not much luck cutting the acrylic with the 30 watt laser i know acrylic can be hit and miss with diode lasers so they did come out a lot cleaner on the co2 laser you can also cut these out of wood i've made those out of three mil bass wood as well and the 30 watt would do a great job of that so overall, I'm very happy with how powerful this 30 watt module from Longer is. It's honestly comparable to the strength of my CO2 laser. If you are someone who prefers to just do engravings and portraits and canvas type stuff, the 10 watt is probably okay for you. If you're someone like myself who really more enjoys cutting, making 3D files, making usable items to uh, hang on the wall or different tools, the 30 watt is definitely the way to go. It's got a ton of power. It opens up a whole bunch of possibilities as far as cutting thicker materials. So I'm very excited to keep testing it i want to uh, do a couple projects out of some quarter inch plywood and i will keep you updated so i'll drop links to everything useful below i mentioned in this video such as the firmware updates the links to the longer website for the uh the instructions to do the install all that stuff is pretty straightforward just go through the steps and uh, you should have no problem so once again thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time